My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons and it's my pleasure to welcome you to St Edward's Church in Leek for our service of morning prayer on this sixth Sunday of Easter, which we begin by using our opening responses. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and sing God's praise forever. We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins. That by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. And now we'll sing our first hymn. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Therefore, let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. 
have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, may God, our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore, shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord, creator and redeemer of all. To you be praise and glory forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day now lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll sing our second song.
The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 55, reading verses 1 to 11. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Acts chapter 10 verses 44 to 48 While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they had heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him in to stay for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, and Christ shall give you light. When Christ, our life, appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead and Christ shall give you light. And now we'll sing our third hymn.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you now, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to meet with us afresh as we reflect on your word. And give us ears to hear, minds to understand, and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. A wealthy man lent one of his cars to his son. The young man came back after a few minutes and said, There's water in the carburetta. His dad said, How do you know that? You don't understand engines. The son replied, There's definitely water in the carburetta. His dad said, I'll come and have a look. Where's the car? The son replied, It's in the swimming pool. Water is a vital and essential feature of life. Without the presence of water on the planet, life would not have come into being and would not exist. All creatures need either to drink it or to extract oxygen from it. And of course it comes in many different shapes and sizes, as rain, snow or ice, in brooks, rivers, lakes and seas. In our Old Testament reading, God speaks through the prophet Isaiah about waters that will never run dry, a plentiful supply for all who want to drink. These are the waters of the Spirit, provided by God to nourish our souls and our inner being, and needed by everyone in order to sustain spiritual life and relationship with him. These waters can be accessed anywhere and at any time through repentance and faith, unlike the supply of physical water, which requires us to tap into its provision at the places where it can be found. We are richly blessed in this country to have a network of reservoirs and pipes which brings this supply into our homes. But despite the fact that two-thirds of the Earth's surface is covered by water, it is still, for many people, a resource that is very difficult to obtain. Christian Aid Week starts tomorrow, during which there is a particular focus of encouragement for us all to support their work by making a financial gift. One of the things they do is to help people to develop water supplies in dry and arid landscapes. And the video I'm about to show you is about one person, Florence, whose life has been transformed with their help. Kama kama sita ndita Florence mbona mwiviani Ndienda ako dhata nenda kwina with that on ngeni na wangoni Ni kwitu kana dhawa njeshi la uko na kwitu njeshi ban ban njeshi la uko ni makwina na ina na manyi kwitu kuma tena ni na kwina
lakini ngai andethesia wina akwatie vina Kiza ngasi ani kwitha ai oite kai ni ndivina Ndivina ni mbesa nguko ya kwendo ya ya ni anywa kibu no ni tenka umi mbesa isupa ngetha ni iwe ni muthanga ku kona wata kindu cha ku nuwi gwa moyo tusukuma tu no nyeba ai no be kibeti ina mutethi ndi nyongo ene asi ndethesia Nindu matungia muvea kiasi wanga ya meke nesa angiasia pawe mbesu isi na umie wanga ya ongelele vo That video shows remarkably clearly the importance of water, a commodity that Florence used to have to spend six hours a day walking to collect. And it shows us clearly the huge difference that having access to a closer supply of water has made. Instead of spending hours walking every day, she can now spend them keeping livestock and growing vegetables and keeping bees and selling her produce at the market. The fact that she, and doubtless many others in her village, were previously willing to spend so much of their time fetching water speaks very powerfully about its importance in their lives. And the fact that their lives have been changed so much now speaks very powerfully about the amazing transformation that water is able to bring into people's lives. All that makes it interesting to reflect on the fact that when God speaks about our need for spiritual nourishment, he uses the precious commodity of water as an illustration, because he wants to encourage us to see that it's essential to invest time and energy in our spiritual growth, just as much as we do in meeting our physical needs. So let's hold all those thoughts in our hearts as we think about what God is saying through Isaiah. This reading is one of the most exuberant passages in the Bible, and its purpose is to get us all to see that we need to become immersed, not in a swimming pool where the car the sun borrowed ended up, but in a deep and life-changing relationship with God himself. In these verses, we find three important elements. There is an invitation, there is a promise, and there is a condition. The invitation is right at the beginning. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. People are often uncertain about what God is like. But here, the Bible is showing us clearly 
that the one true living God, the God who hasn't been invented by a human being, but who has in fact created humankind, is on our side. He made us. Therefore, he loves us and he wants what is best for us. So here, through the prophet Isaiah, he sends his invitation to Israel to come to him and receive the things that are essential to life. And today, he sends that same invitation to us all through his son, Jesus Christ. The promise is woven into the invitation. And it's a promise of satisfaction. Eat what is good and you will delight in the richest of fare. Listen that you may live. God is saying that true satisfaction can only be found in him and is offering to give us what is genuinely good. And we find the same message on the lips of Jesus, who said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I have come that you might have life, life in all its fullness. God's invitation to us all is backed up by his promise of life. And that life is secured for us all by the death and resurrection of Jesus. And then there's the condition. Conditions are usually designed to limit the responsibility of whoever is doing something for us. But God doesn't place any boundaries on what he is able to provide. His condition concerns us, and it comes in two parts. The first is, seek the Lord while he may be found. The offer is on the table, but we need to come and collect it. We need to abandon our own attempts to find satisfaction elsewhere so that we can receive it from him. And the second part of the condition is this. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. Now perhaps you don't think of yourself as wicked or unrighteous, but those words are often used in the Bible to denote anything that falls short of God's standards, which we all do. Part of our response to God's immense generosity must be to admit that it is undeserved, to receive the forgiveness we need and to live with his help in a new and different way. In the developed world, our lives are often so complex, with many desires, that people still seek the fulfilment of. We are trained to demand the things we perceive to be rightfully ours, but which in many cases are unimaginable luxuries to people like Florence who lives happily and sings and works hard and who prays simply for peace for her children and for rain. It's deeply challenging not just to see people living such simple lives but to see them doing so with genuine thankfulness and joy. So this Christian Aid Week, let's allow our hearts to be stirred afresh, to hear the cry of the thirsty and the hungry, and to give from our wealth to help them. Our newsletter this week has an online link to an e-envelope, which you can use to do that. Jesus echoing the words of Isaiah, said, I am the bread of life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry again. Those who believe in me will never 
thirst. Let's hear this amazing invitation on the lips of Christ himself. Let's wonder afresh at the promise of life he holds out to us. And let's respond with a seeking heart that is ready to receive his mercy and be transformed by it, so that we can be strengthened afresh by him each day to show it to others in his name. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for your promise that springs of living water will flow from within everyone who comes to you and receives you in faith. Thank you for people like Florence, whose lives are being transformed by your grace, shown to them through the work of Christian aid. Help us to learn contentment with the simple things of life. Give us generous hearts to share our plenty with those in need. Refresh us daily with your water of life. And teach us how to reshape our lives in ways which honour you. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we'll sing our fourth song. All across the world, from the sun's rising to its setting, may his glory fill all the earth. The sun's rising unto the sunset. Jesus our Lord shall be great in the earth, and all earth's kingdoms shall be his dominion. All of creation shall sing of his word. Let every heart, every voice, every tongue join with spirits of praise. What is we will circle the world with the song of His praise. Oh, let all His people rejoice, and let all the earth hear His voice. 
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, who through your Son has revealed your great love for us. In his resurrection, you have given us a friend and a saviour. We rejoice in your presence this day with the joy and freedom of the children of God. Blessed are you, our God forever. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. As you have called us to be friends, to reveal your love and the joy of your presence, we come with sorrow for the divisions of the church and the world. We seek forgiveness for rivalry and disunity within the church. Lord, strengthen us in love and lead us to a unity that reflects that we are one in you. May divisions within our homes, our communities, our nation and our world be healed and well-being restored. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We come before you as part of a world caught up in violence, war, hatred, greed and hunger. There are people who are oppressed and treated as slaves. There are people who are counted as nothing, rejected and unloved. Lord, forgive us and change us. Strengthen the work of Christian aid and all organisations and individuals who seek the peace and well-being of all. May we share in the care of all suffering people. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We give you thanks for all our loved ones for their generosity and sacrifice for us. We remember all who feel unloved and unwanted. We pray for homes where there is hatred or violence, where there is little respect for one another, where there is neglect. We pray for your blessing upon all who have been taken into care and those caring for them. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. Lord of love, we remember before you all who are raging against life and all who are not at peace with themselves or the world. We pray for all who have hardened their hearts against love. We remember before you all who are lonely. We pray for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit. And those who have been injured. We remember those who mourn. Asking for your comfort. Lord, as you love us, help us to love one another. We rejoice in your saving love and that you have called us to eternal life. We pray that you would guide and strengthen us and all whom we love to follow in the footsteps of all the saints, thankful for our friendship with one another and with you until that day when we meet together in your eternal kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. 
your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now we'll sing our final hymn. And so now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service this morning. We look forward to inviting you again to our service of morning worship next Sunday. <laughs>